I'm going to show you a, a new reaction today. Uh, it is a limiting reactant type of uh, problem, but this time it involves a mass of a substance where we're going to convert that to a volume of a gaseous substance. The reaction that I'm going to do is a reaction taking place between a piece of magnesium metal, a small piece of it, hydrochloric acid, uh, pretty strong, about six molar. When the reaction takes place, it's going to be a single replacement reaction. So magnesium is going to come in, knock out the hydrogen. I'll get hydrogen gas, and the magnesium and the chloride will form together and produce magnesium chloride. This starts out as a solid. The hydrochloric acid is aqueous. I eventually produce a gas, and I'll have a liquid in the uh, reaction tube that will be left over, and that also is aqueous, and eventually I will, I'll pour this down the, the drain. Now, let's balance the equation. I've got two hydrogens on the right, on the product side. I need to have two over here. Let me put a coefficient of two in front of the hydrogen. Now, I got two hydrogen chloride molecules, but by putting that two in front, I also have two chlorides. And when I go over here, there's already two chlorides. So all I need to do is put a one in front of the magnesium chloride. The hydrogen, we've already balanced. I'll put a one in front of that. I have one Mg, one magnesium here. So I'll come to the reactant side and I'll put a one in front of the magnesium. <clears throat> now, the materials that I want to uh, do by means, of, by means of calculation are, I'm going to have my magnesium as a known, and I want to predict how much hydrogen gas I can get when I do the reaction. So this will be my unknown. And I have the basic setup to the problem here on the whiteboard. And uh, I'm going to be coming back to this, but I would suggest what you do is copy this into your uh, notebook, and then we'll do the mathematical part of it also. I'm going to stop the video at this point and take you over to the lab equipment. I want to show you some of the materials and equipment we have today. Uh, right in front of you, and you can see it here, I had to borrow from Dr. Bellardi's uh, classroom a uh, balance that is able to read four places behind the decimal point. It's called an analytical balance. And the reason why I want to do that is what I'm going to be using is a small piece of magnesium ribbon. It's very thin metal. Uh, it's very light, a little bit silvery, as you can see, uh, extremely thin. So what I want to do is I want to put that into the analytical balance. The analytical balance pan is surrounded by a glass enclosure and that enables us to re measure things without the interference of a draft of air. And then what I do is I look at the uh, display here. Let me move our computer up so you can see. And I'm reading 0.0252 grams. So I'll use that number as my starting mass of magnesium. Now I'll stop the computer here momentarily. A couple of other pieces of equipment. Uh, on my stand here, I have a special clamp. You might be able to see that it's a little different from what you maybe have used in the past. It uh, is able to hold test tubes and very large measuring tubes uh, that are uh, narrow in, in diameter, but they're long. Uh, behind it, over here, I have a graduated cylinder, and I filled the graduated cylinder up towards the top here with uh, tap water. And I have that clamped also just for secure uh, purposes. I have a beaker, and the beaker is uh, about uh, 400, 300 milliliters of tap water. And I have another beaker here that I'll use to uh, actually fill uh, another part of the equipment more completely with water. The reaction is going to take place. I'm going to use some 6 molar hydrochloric acid. And you can see that on my bottle here. And the reaction vessel that I'm going to use is a large uh, tube, glass tube. It's closed on one end, and you can see that. But then um, when I move it down through all the graduations to the other end, the other end is open, and I'll be able to put liquids into this. And that's one of the uh, purposes of uh, doing my reaction here in a uh, 
tube with a, an opening on it. If I get a gas, the gas will produce a pressure, but the pressure in turn will be eliminated by or reduced by um, water in the tube that's leaving. So let me take uh, a beaker and my acid and I'll start to fill the tube. I'm going to put about uh, seven milliliters of hydrochloric acid into the tube and as you look at it you're reading the numbers upside down because it reads from the top of the tube up here where it's closed and it reads down. So let's put some acid in. Put about seven milliliters in. Okay, so there's our acid. It's pretty strong, so I'll be careful with that. And then let's put water in. And my water sits on top of the acid. The acid is a little bit more dense, so as I add the water here, the water will just um, accumulate on the top of the of the acid. I'll fill it all the way to the top, and let me momentarily clamp it into the burette clamp, and that'll hold it for the time being. Now I take my piece of magnesium. We've already weighed it, and I'm going to wrap it up in a piece of copper wire, very thin copper wire. You might be able to see that. I'm just going to wrap little loops around it. And the reason I'm doing this is to hold the magnesium from floating away. It's a very light metal, but once I get it involved in the chemical reaction, it will have a tendency to uh, float away. So I just wrapped it there. And let me now put it, uh, put the uh, copper wire through a little tiny uh, stopper. It has one hole on the top of it. Here's my stopper and a single hole on the end of it. So we'll put that piece of wire through there and kind of bend it over a little bit to hold it in place. Okay, so there's my magnesium. I'm going to take my magnesium now and I'm going to set it on the open end of the uh, burette or on, on the open end of the gas measuring tube. This uh, measuring tube is called a UDometer, E U D I. O M E T E R udiometer, and uh, its purpose is to trap gaseous substances. So the next thing I want to do is invert it and put it down into the beaker of water. So because the bottom has got the acid in it and the top part has just water, I can take this off and flip it over, hold my finger on the end of it. I don't have to worry about um, the acid getting into my finger, or on my finger. Let me just readjust my magnesium here. <clears throat> uh, I'm protected by the a lot of water that's there. Okay, so there's our piece of magnesium again. We'll put that on the top. Push it in all the way. A little bit of water came out, that's good. I don't want to have any air bubbles in here. And I'll flip this over and then invert it down into the beaker, which already has the water in it. I'll leave it set up off the bottom just a little bit. And what's neat about this reaction is that as the acid starts to flow down the tube, you can kind of see a syrupy effect with the liquid. That's going to be hard for you guys to see, but it's like uh, you were to pour something in here, it has a little different density, which in fact it does and then as it floats down or comes down through the tube it eventually will reach the piece of magnesium now I'm going to stop the video here for just a second because uh, I want to wait until we get it some some action down at the bottom here rather than waste your time now it's it's taken about a minute for the acid to come down to uh, react with the magnesium and at this point I'm now starting to see a lot of bubbles that are coming up uh, off of the magnesium and rising in the tube. They will eventually go to the top and they will be trapped at the closed end. And eventually what we will do is we will re read the volume that we get. And I'll show you some calculations before we do that. It's reacting vigorously now. I can see lots of bubbles being produced. And I can see it a little 
uh, bubble of gas being formed at the top. So my reaction is continuing. The magnesium is bubbling real good. I don't think you can see that. No, you can see a little bit of bubbling that's there. Now, I'm going to let this react uh, for a while. And I'm going to turn off the video again so that I'm not wasting your time. Uh, we'll let all the effervescence, the bubbling take place, and we'll come back and look at the results. Now, the reactions going on uh, to uh, help us go a little faster here, I'm going to put some of the numbers into my equation so that we can do the calculation. The, the mass of the uh, magnesium was 0 0.0252. And when I use the periodic table and look up the mass of magnesium, I find that it's 24.305 grams. I'm going to put that on the bottom. I'll put one more up here for my magnesium. And I've set these up in such a way that I can cancel these units. It's always nice with the factor label technique to do that. My unknown is my hydrogen, and when I look at my chemical reaction up top there, I find that the ratio uh, for the moles is one mole of, of hydrogen gas per one mole of magnesium metal. My mole ratio is one to one. And I've got mole of magnesium here, mole of magnesium down here, they'll cancel, that's nice. And the final thing I want to do is put in the volume, I'll put that in liters. I'll put it over one mole of hydrogen. The number that I'm going to use here is a number that you're probably familiar with. Uh, you might remember seeing that box for the molar volume, 22.4. Well, we're doing this reaction in room conditions. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my value here as a 24.5 liter value, which is the room condition value. 24.5 liter hydrogen. Now, let me stop here. We'll do a calculation and we'll see how much uh, hydrogen we predict we should get. Uh, whether or not we get that, we'll find out by doing a little calculation for percent yield. I'm going to stop. My reaction is still bubbling pretty vigorously. Uh, we took a little break here. The time frame was about three minutes. I'm going to come back and do the math for my calculation here, and then we'll go back to uh, take a look at the results. Magnesium with uh, grams of magnesium and grams of magnesium, they're going to cancel. That's good. Mole magnesium, mole magnesium, they will cancel. The ones also. One mole of hydrogen, one mole of hydrogen, that'll all cancel. And my answer should now be in liters of uh, hydrogen gas. And when I did the math to this, uh, my prediction was 0 0.0252 two liters and if I change that into milliliters that's going to become 25.2 milliliters all I have to do here is multiply by a thousand there's a thousand milliliters per one liter liters will cancel so my prediction is that we should get if everything works good about 25.2 milliliters of gas and I'll stop here and we'll see what we actually get my last step on the reaction is to get the volume, and I'm reading here about 27 and a half milliliters, but I'm going to adjust the uh, volume so that the pressure of the gas on the inside is equal to the pressure of the atmosphere. And the way I can do that is by placing the tube into the graduated cylinder and then reading the volume. And when I get the two uh, levels of liquid to be the same, Oh, you can't see that. Let me bring that around. When I get the two levels to be the same, then I read the inside mark, and it's reading 27.2 milliliters. Uh, that's a little higher than what our uh, calculation suggested, and probably this piece of magnesium is doing a little bit of uh, uh, bulking up, uh, but it's still a pretty decent uh, result from the reaction. The limiting reactant here was the magnesium, the excess reactant was the hydrochloric acid, and they worked very well. And I'll stop at this point. You can do a little calculation for the percent yield.